amazing humans. Welcome to another episode of Mysteries with a History, where I'll take you onto the wild ride into the unknown, the strange, and the mysterious. Like you, I have questions, and like you, I have, well, actually, I don't have answers. I just have more questions to all of my answers. <laughs> so I want to thank all of my subscribers because over the weekend I passed a major milestone and that was to hit 5,000 subs to the channel. So that is so awesome and and really helping to open up the conversation and getting the eyes on the skies a message out there. Remember, if you have kids or nephews, nieces, cousins, or friends who are Gen Zers or high schoolers or teenagers, college students, you know, the younger crowd who haven't had much exposure to this amazing topic, please, please, please share the links. Help me raise awareness among the young and the curious minds who were touched by all the coverage of the UFO report and UAPs in the news. That's my mission. That's my drive to ask those big questions and seek those big answers. And to involve the young minds of today who will be the leaders and the researchers of our future. Again, I want to thank all of you so, so much. Do not forget to share, share, share this channel on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and wherever. And help me reach my next goal of 10,000 subscribers. Hey, Jimmy, good to see you. How are you doing? Let me hit some buttons here. Am I good? <laughs> You're perfect. You know, uh, and, and thank you for the invite today. And um, uh, a, a couple of things really quick. I, I can't figure out how to chat. I can see the chat. How do I comment? Comment on other people's? I just anywhere. I, I, can I say hello? <laughs> yeah. So on, do you, on your section using StreamYard, it says comments. You yep. should be able to comment right below, and there should also be a private chat where you can message as well. Okay, I, I, that's right. I I I I don't see it. I just don't. Well, you're old school and using Skype for all of your. No, interviews. no, I'm I'm using you. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm using your link. No, I'm in Streamyard. I just don't see um, how to comment. And then when I clicked on log in. I got uh I got booted out. Oh, I just got booted out again. Okay, nice. so now I'm back. Okay. Oh, I'm in two stream yards. Okay, but everybody can see me now, right? Somebody yes. say hello in in okay. Just well, uh, Rogue, okay, Rogue says hi Uncle Jim from okay. last week's stream. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're good to go. Okay, um, let's do this. I know that we have a hard deadline today. I promise everybody I'm not going to yap for two hours. I can't. Um, uh, but, and, and, and Christina sent me the, the text, church, hard, hard cutoff today. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I did, but I also put a happy face at the end. Just to, yeah, you did, you did, you did. To make it to make it softer. So today's topic is going to be a continuation of last week's show on alien visitors and intruders. So. I started off last week with um, with a cursory looking at alien type most commonly known as the greys, which we did cover last week. You did have your little statue going on for you and really um, pointing at all the locations. Yeah, the, the <laughs> anatomically correct uh, gray statue. That, I, that thing is metal. It weighs, it's got to weigh 100 pounds. It's crazy. No I'm, 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 you know, I'm, it's, 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 it's nuts. It's really cool. Okay. So last week we did the grays. Right. So we are going to be hitting um, a few more topics but before we even dive into our next thing for those that didn't watch um, last week, I just want to give a, just a brief overview. And um, as I mentioned, right, uh, there seemed to be a a variety of different types of grays according to reports okay some are tall some are short some to be organic looking while others are almost artificial is that right jimmy from the accounts you've heard that sounds good to me yes yes i mean i i, I would think that uh there is there has to be a variety uh, yeah. i i would be very surprised if it was just uh one single type of gray species Right, just like with people, right? There's just yeah, one, yeah, a bunch yeah, of them. exactly. Yeah, we went, we 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 spent a lot of time on that last week. Um, okay, and so today I'm I'm going to take a guess, mantids. We are going to be covering that if if time permits. <laughs> but the next one is going to be the reptilians. But before we jump into that, something that I wanted to mention from last week's show that I didn't have time to that I found really interesting. I didn't really put the two pieces together but um we know that the agrees originate from a world a world around the zeta reticuli star system okay and this is because of a star system that betty hill drew after her alleged alien abduction on september 20th 1961. the star map didn't make much sense to anyone for years until some years later and is honor by, by the name of um Marjorie Fish found an uncanny resemblance between Betty's map and the dual um, Zeta Reticuli one and two star systems. And that is what cemented it in modern pulp culture. So the grays have also often been referred to as the Zeta Reticulans. And I found that really interesting. Yes. And also, if we go back and look at uh, another image that I always found very, very interesting that predates everything by, by quite a bit is Alistair Crowley's lamb. And this particular being, if you go back and uh, let me separate a couple of things here on my screen. Let me pull you over here. And then I'm going to put this over here on this screen. Okay. All right. I'm good to go, people. I'm, I'm, I'm more organized than, than I seem at the moment. Um, Lamb was uh, this, this being that Alistair Crowley drew. And when you look at this particular being, I would say, and I would love to see in the comments what everybody has to say, I would say that this is probably one of the first accurate depictions of what a gray may look like. And when you look at uh, uh, Betty Hill's drawing and, and others, you know, from the uh, early 60s, Lamb, Lamb is first. Lamb, mm -hmm. lamb, lamb predates all of this by uh, a few decades, and, and so I. And drawing by Betty Hill as well. Yes, yes, and and if you look and you compare the two side by side, the similarities are there. I I very seriously doubt, and we can move on, but that uh, uh, Betty Hill uh, had, you know, no chance of ever seeing uh, Alistair Crowley's lamb, and. Uh, that that is more of a modern thing in, in investigations where people have gone back and looked at Lamb and just said, hey, wait a minute here. There's something very, very interesting and very similar. 
So um, let, let's go ahead and continue. But if you could uh, put up a picture of Lamb, I don't, I don't know if I have that ability uh, to do that. Yeah, you can also share your screen if you have it, but um, I can go ahead and try and look for it. Oh, I, I have it. Let's see. How do I share a screen? Okay, so at, at the bottom of uh, StreamYard, it's going to say share. There you can ah, got share it. and you can share your tabs. Okay, let's see if I can pull this up. Let me see what I can do here. Do, do, do. Where is Lamb? Let me get a... Let me get a high res version of it. But yeah, Lamb is just like insanely cool. Okay, here we go. So I hit share screen. I have two screens in front of me. Will it know which screen to do? Uh, you have to click it, but I, I have it. I have it if you want me to share it. Let's see, share screen. Uh, shares uh, with two monitors. Okay, let's see. Okay, there. Got it. Boom. Okay, now, am I sharing it? Ah, there it is. Oh, oh who is yeah, that? Is. Is that me or you? That was me. Sorry. That's you? No, no that's no, me. This, this is you now. <laughs> that's me, showing all of my private stuff on the top. See, now you guys know that I'm looking for Harley Davidsons. <laughs> but, yeah, that's Lamb. Lamb is crazy. Lamb is a very, 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 very interesting uh, image. And so for everybody, let's see, stop sharing. You can go and look at look up Lamb, L-A-M. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. That's really creepy. very odd. Yeah, it creepy. It is, but I mean, and anything that doesn't look like us is going to be classified as creepy, right? <laughs> we are very biased. I think that's me before my first cup of coffee in the morning, actually. Um, I'm just going to admit that now. Oh, my God. Okay, so, okay, so uh, uh, but you were going to, uh, you mentioned reptilians. Mm -hmm. So that's the next thing we're going to be talking about because there are so many different types of um, alien races, allegedly. So the next one we're going to be covering is... Um, is the type being called reptilians. Now, this isn't so straightforward as allegedly there are several different types of reptilian races that have been interacting with our planet since ancient times, okay? And they also have various names, such as the reptoids, draconians, lizard people, the draco, the reptilioids, and the um, Syrians. So, that's a lot, right? But when I sit back and I muse about the different types of reptilians that get described, I always fall back to the vast variety of dinosaurs that once roamed and ruled our planet. So here is what some people think reptilians look like. And still new fossils are being discovered every year with new types of dinosaurs being added to the literature. Now, when you compare the size of a common desert lizard to me to let's say you know a, a brontosaurus obviously there's a huge difference in size right jimmy between a lizard yeah, and a brontosaurus yes, it's absolutely big. and this image that you popped up here i always think about uh i make these hollywood references all the time but go back to the movie galaxy quest there is something about what you've just put up here and what is represented in Galaxy Quest. And although Galaxy Quest is a comedy and, and it's a great movie, I always thought, I always felt like it was kind of like a documentary, but that's my take. But their representation of the reptilians in Galaxy Quest is very close to what we're seeing here. And I always thought that that was probably pretty accurate. Just my take, but looking at this image, if everybody can go back and, and watch Galaxy Quest tonight, <laughs> you'll understand what I'm talking about. And when we are, I've never seen the movie, by the way, so I, I never heard of it either, but it sounds really interesting. And What? <laughs> it, this Galaxy Quest, is, is it based off on another planet or is it on Earth? <sighs> I think I have to go. I think I have to check out. Listen, Galaxy <laughs> Quest. Oh my gosh. Galaxy Quest uh, stars uh, Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, 
um, and others. It's 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 an amazing cast. It is uh, it's it's a take on a comedic take on Star Trek. Um, mm-hmm. Instead of calling the show Star Trek, it's called Galaxy Quest. And but they go out and they do their thing, and uh, uh, they they encounter a reptilian race that is uh, pretty angry, very close to what uh, what you what you put up and when you shared your screen. I think everybody's going to agree. Yeah, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman is amazing in the movie. Anyway, this isn't about Galaxy Quest, everybody. But the reptilians in Galaxy Quest, although it's a comedy. I think it's 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 worth noting and and taking a look at it. You know that uh, I just I'm looking at it now and it came out the year I was born, 1999. That, I'm so out of here. So, <laughs> I was at the premiere. <laughs> Jeez, so, it just came out of the womb at that oh, time. Oh man, that just hurt. <laughs> That just hurt. Okay. And um, and um, NMUAP says Galaxy Quest 1999. Maybe before your time. That's right. That's wow. very, very correct. And with Galaxy Quest, and when we're looking at reptilians, when we're looking at dinosaurs, do you think maybe it's possible that another world could evolve creatures such as dinosaurs the way that the Earth did? I mean, um, could there be a precedent for that? One hundred, absolutely, one hundred percent. There is. If we go back now, uh, let's let's get out of us today modern history the farther you go back the representation with cultures around this world of reptilian beings reptilian myths the folklore the imaging the sculpture the paintings it's all there and i i it's just the the way that it is and some some dinosaurs were probably just as smart as we were. If the if that asteroid hadn't have hit 66 million years ago, uh, Christina, who's to say that today dinosaurs wouldn't be building radar telescopes and have the internet? Well, I am really, really happy you brought that up because that's something that I want to talk about and that I find really interesting. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So in 1982, a late paleontologist by the name of Dale Russell, who is this guy, who was a uh, caretaker of the vertebrate fossil at the National Museum of Canada in um, Ottawa. Is that how you say it? Ottawa? So he conjectured. It's Ottawa, but. <laughs> Not even close to what I said. Oh, gosh, I lost my screen. Okay. It's, 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 it's Ottawa. I do is that all the time on the air. Um, one time on Coast to Coast, um, <laughs> Diaspora, right? I said, I said something like Diaspora or something on the air live, and uh, and I said it like three times, and I got five thousand emails. So it happens all the time, Christine. It's okay, but it is Ottawa. Ottawa. Well, thank you for correcting me. I, I've been saying it wrong my whole life, and I really was saying Ottawa. I don't have any Canadian friends, so that no one corrects me. But anyways, so he conjectured a possible evolutionary path that might have been taken by a bipedal predator, just how it's shown in this picture, right? Um, had they not all perished in the KT extinction event, you know, almost 85 million years ago. The image that I'm showing you right now basically gives his estimation of how such a theoretical creature would look like today. And as we know, as we know from history books, from fossils, from paleontologists, you know, dinosaurs are incredibly tough creatures. And to have been wiped out like they were, it was a devastating event for the entire planet. Even today, when we look at the survivors, such as crocodiles and alligators, we feel fear you know they are dangerous and hard as nails like i'm not gonna lie crocodiles i wouldn't get too close to them the 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 other part is we know that today we have a reptilian section of our brain and yes. when when i hear this uh spoken about 
I'm always, you know, taken aback just a little bit, but you have to just say, of course, right? And if you go back, <clears throat> the representations um, in Mesoamerica, in, in Central America, South America, of um, these reptilian gods and serpent gods, you have to just ask yourself, where are they getting this from? They weren't part of science fiction. They weren't reading modern science fiction. Where is this coming from? And it, it goes all the way over to, to Egypt. And if you think about uh, one other piece to this puzzle, when we're talking about the reptilians, I ask anybody to ponder and think about dragons. Now, dragons, which have been depicted for millennia, and are part of so many uh, coat of arms of, of families and dynasties around the world and flags and and the way, but dinosaurs weren't discovered until Montana in the 1800s. So if you um, put all of that together, where are they getting the imaging from? And what is it that they were seeing? And this goes back thousands and thousands of years. Could it be, A, first, that dragons are real, but B, that this could be part of uh, a reptilian species that has occupied this planet and evolved uh, over millions of years? I, I would have to say there, there's something to it. And I'm okay with it because the imagery and the folklore and the eyewitness testimony and everything that we have established today uh, gives us a full line going backwards where reptilians have been a part of planet Earth. And if you think about it, if you really think about the fact that what if dragons were real, it makes you question everything to do with mythology, everything to do with folklore, because for decades, if not hundreds of years, dragons are merely mythological creatures, nothing more. They could never exist. But if, in fact, it could be proven that they were real, it would make us question all of the stories we have been told as children. I'm so into that. I'm so into it. And then when we look at today with uh, reptilians um, visiting Earth and in contact uh, with us here, there's another part of it. Because when I think reptilian, I get a little scared, right? Yeah, they look mean and nasty, but uh, and and some have purported uh, to be just that a little mean, but um, they're intelligent, they're compassionate, they're empathic, and they show the opposite of what the imaging is, right? And I've I've always been intrigued by that, Christina. Very very intrigued. With this kind of topic, all you can do is think about it. You never have other wandering thoughts and topics like these. Charles says, by the way, thank you so much, Charles. He says, have either of you read or heard of the, gen the gen genetic genesis by Albert E. Potts? Really fascinating read if you are ever thinking about reptilians. Yes, and uh, I, I do have a copy. I have uh, thumbed through it, but uh, thank you for that, Charles. And uh, oh, somebody else commented, it, it's buried back. Uh, Christina, how can you possibly stay on topic and invite Jimmy on the show? <laughs> he always has an invite. He, <laughs> he's an encyclopedia. He has so much to bring to the table that I'm ready to learn. And hopefully those that are also listening are excited to learn with me. Now, let me so let me let me throw this over to you, Christina. Let's just say, right, let's go to the moment. Uh, you and I are at Edwards Air Force Base this weekend. All that incredible stuff is going down. And then we meet up with some reptilians. Are you scared? What what goes through your mind? The good thing is I always bring snacks. So if I ever feel fear, the best way to get to a person's heart is through their stomach. That's my mom saying. It's like a very old saying. So I have nothing to worry about. So they need to bring epinadas? Street tacos? Anything that I have it that I can fit in my bag, I will hand over to them and be like, All right. please, let's be friends. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good point of view. I, I, um, I often wonder if 
if somebody that is extremely advanced and visits us on this planet, they are certainly way in front of us uh, with technology. All right, that's that's a given. Yeah. But would they freak us out, right? Or would they find a way to mask stealth themselves out to maybe look like something that we would be familiar with, you know, humans and, and, and it may be changed and shape shift. And then after we're cool, then they go whoop and unmask themselves. And we've got the green reptilian dude that you posted up earlier. Have you ever seen the movie called childhood's end? Absolutely. I've seen it many, many times. The three parter. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, what you're saying is very similar to that movie. Yes, Arthur C. Clarke presented all of this. Idea. Okay, so let, let, let's actually discuss this. So let's stay on topic, everybody. I'm going to stay on topic for you. What uh, Childhood's End, um, and it was a short story that was developed into this three-part uh, movie, uh, mini, uh, mini uh, series. And if you haven't seen it, it is, it, it is an absolute must viewing. Yeah for anybody in ufology. It so, will shift your paradigm with on how you see things. Right. 100%. Right. And this um, alien being um, didn't want to show himself to planet Earth because he felt that his image would freak everybody out. Now, what did he look like? Well, he looked like Satan. He looked like the devil. He had hooves. He had wings. He was red. <laughs> he had these crazy reptilian green eyes. But he was a cool dude, right? Well, ultimately, he was here to destroy Earth, and that comes out later. But but during this period... But he was, he was going to destroy Earth because that was a part of the cycle. Not right. to kill everyone, but just because he was asked to by a higher being to go ahead and finish off the planet. So and they take their the kids, could never right. could never end. And, and they absolutely. take our they take our children and leave the adults, uh, which was a, a, a pretty interesting. Anyway, back to this. So he spoke. He he chooses a representative, uh, this farmer here on Earth, to speak for him to the world and announce everything that they were going to do. They were going to fix diseases and hunger and and jobs and the economy. And you know, that's what they were here to do. And they did all of that, but he kept himself hidden. And then, uh, his image was revealed. He was behind two way glass. He gets photographed right by this representative. And, and he looks through the photographs and he sees the image that he's got. And it's Satan horns, right? The whole, the whole shot. And that idea uh, that um, Arthur C. Clarke presented, I think, is valid, right? Uh, I think that no matter what an ET uh, species would look like, we wouldn't be too comf comfortable with it. So going back to my question to you, Christina, let's say... They shapeshift. They go from human form to reptilian, but you know that they're cool. They're okay. They, they're not showing you any harm. You're not being threatened. But they, whoop, right, unveil themselves as, as looking like uh, the devil, for instance, or a reptilian. Do you freak out or are you okay? And this is the problem with the, the entire planet. What do you do? Maybe it's already happening today. Maybe this is already going on, right? Possibly. And if they were to show themselves, I, I'm not too sure. You know, I worry about, about how many people would react, right? We have so much intolerance of other cultures and skin colors here among us. So just imagine an alien species altogether. How would we react? How would I react? It's really hard to tell. I mean, we're, I mean, actions speak a lot louder than words. I can tell you, yeah, I would do great. But if it really were to happen, I simply don't know how I would react. Hopefully calmly. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I would react. It would, like you said, it would require probably some good food and some chilled vodka. Uh, Ooh, to get yeah, the whatever you have. 
Well, it be, because it that would have to be the way that it is, right? And we are threatened by images all day long with just different cultures sure. on this planet. Yes, and we are, and and we would have to deal with it that way, and to shift off of. This is your show, but I want to go back to the mantids uh, really quick. Mm -hmm. um, I have done countless shows and interviews with um, experiencers that have described being in the presence of mantid beings. A variety of, of different scenarios, whether it's privately in your home or in your bedroom or on a ship or maybe underground at another location. Um, Th but what I have always found, uh, because when you think of a praying mantis or a mantid being and you see those images, that's about as frightening as it gets, right? And, and we know that praying mantis uh, can be can be a little wicked, right? And, and they look you know, with the triangle heads and, and the, you know, all of that. Um, but they, in the presence of these experiencers, we're the most compassionate. We're the most caring of all of the species. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, I'm definitely going to jump talking about the mantis beings, but first John has a question and I want to say um, thank you everyone that's giving out super chats. This really helps support my show and my work. Thank you guys so much. It really, really means a lot. And John says, Jimmy, I'm asking the same as my super chat to you from last night, which I didn't get answered. Why did Travis say he takes government side in not admitting whole truth to the public? And are there any news about Elizondo's big new news drop soon? Okay, John, and, and thank you, Christina. 20, 20 smackaroos, 20 oh, ducks quacking in the awesome. pond. Thank, thank you for that, John. Um, I, I, I did see this last night, but I didn't understand the question last night, and I'm not totally clear. The Elizondo part I am. But um, uh, did Travis say he takes the government side and not admitting whole truth to the public? I'm going to revert this over to the Fader Knots and anybody that is in the chat today that listened to the interview last night. Um, I'm not so sure if that was answered by Travis as directly as my memory uh, says. So, yeah, I, but, but I think that all of us, uh, including Travis, um, understand the government's side of not fully disclosing everything. And, and there's there's way too many. We don't have enough time right now. There's way too many reasons for them to keep a secret. Um, and I I just have to stay right there. I mean, none of them are good reasons, but they are pretty valid if you think about it. And the other part, uh, John, just let me say this in a very broad sense, that once that door is cracked open, the government will have to answer thousands of questions about thousands of issues that go back decades. Everybody is going to not only have something that they're wondering about and a question that they want answered, but they're also going to be probably pretty angry. And we talked about this a little bit last week on the show, Christina, and I don't want to go back and revisit that, but you, I would say that the government is going to just speak about the present tense and they're not the present day. They are not going to go backwards because if they go backwards and it's revealed that they've known about all of this and have had contact since 1947 or before, we've got some problems. And so that's why I think Travis would take the side of the, not taking the side of the government, but understanding why they wouldn't be totally forthwith. So I get that, John, and I hope that answers your question. But if somebody heard Travis answer that more directly last night, pop it up in the chat for John. Yeah, please do. And I do want to say before we continue that uh, I will be doing a part three next week. <laughs> By the way, this on this um, 
alien visitors topic, I'm going to jump forward a bit, talk about the mantises that Jimmy brought up. Um, and we will go back talking about the reptilians a little bit right after this. So the mantises is a very bizarre type of alien that people encounter. I mean, the first thing, the first thing is that they're bugs. Humans do not like bugs. They do not like bugs at all. They're, 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 they're scary and kind of like gross to some people. And I can agree to that. They're not very good. But in ancient Greece, the meaning of the mantis is divine, a being of spiritual or mystical powers. Mantis beings, um, also known as um, Antians or the uh, Kagish, am I saying that right? Kagish, are said to be highly evolved race of insectoids. So uh, those Native American tribes found around the Superstition Mountain and throughout Arizona say they are... Um, Zybians from the planet Zybia. I found that really interesting. So they all look similar to the praying mantis insect that we see today, even some appearing as glowing plasma, while others are reported to have humanoid bodies with the mantis face. Could you, could, wouldn't that be so traumatizing? You see this creature coming up to you and it has a mantis face, but like a regular body. A hundred. I, I would just freak out. Right. I mean, like, I would, how would your brain process that? Yeah, I would. Uh, I would. I would. I would lose. I'm, there's. There's a bad word I want to insert there. Um, I, I'm. I'm a little freaked out about all of that, except if we again. I want to go back. I want everybody to to get hip to what I always refer to. If you go back to all of the ancient gods and the demigods and the and the gods of Egypt. And go look at the imaging and see how they portray um, uh, these different gods and, and, and how they are there. For some reason, I'm okay, right? I'm okay with Thoth. Right? I'm okay with these, with these images, um, these gods that have human bodies and a reptilian head, a bird head, a dog head, the head of a dog, the head of a cat where there is some kind of hybrid representation going on there. And I, and I just don't feel that is crazy. Put that, put that on a human body. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm okay with that imaging. And apparently so were the ancient Egyptians and, and how everything was depicted in, in uh, sculpture, in art and, and the walls of these temples. So I feel that they were seeing something. I don't think it's imagination. I have a picture. Why would you want to imagine this, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be more like a nightmare. I have a picture. I was up at Shasta and I uh, was with a group of people. And this praying mantis lands on my arm, right? Mm -hmm. He's right here. And I was, you know, and they're all taking pictures of me looking right in his face and he's just right on me, just looking right in my eyeballs and I'm looking at him and then he jumps on my nose. No. And I, you've never seen me jump <laughs> like, like I did. There's a video of it out there somewhere. And uh, yeah, just, and, and, and he jumped on my face mm -hmm. and I thought he was so cool, but yeah, praying mantis, uh, they don't play around. That is just uh, a scary and seeing a giant version of that. Um, yeah, in because they, they, they range between four to nine feet tall. That's right. I mean, anything that's bigger than my hand, uh, I'll pass. Now, again, the eyewitness testimony uh, from many thousands of experiencers that have been in the presence of the mantids have all said the same thing. They were the ones that were, were nice. They were the ones that were showing compassion. Those were the ones that cared about me. There were other species in the room that weren't uh, playing nice, but the mantids were, were the ones and they were the intelligent ones. And I think that they've always been portrayed, um, not always, but like doctors, right? Surgeons, yes. physicians, intelligence, educated. Yes, um, that's very true. And it's been mentioned in a few, uh, sorry, I've lost my place. 
But it has been mentioned in quite a few alleged abductions, kind of describing that these mantises project this feeling of compassion and um, endless love. They're also classified as being incredibly intelligent as well. So I found all that really interesting from, from a perspective of a human that doesn't like bugs. The fact that these kinds of humanoid um, insects can be friendly, can have um, a conscience and want to heal people. I, I found all of those really, really bizarre. And something else I want to mention before we jump into the next one is they also have a variety of skin colors, such as beige, brown, lime green, dark emerald green, which sounds beautiful, turquoise, uh, deep violet blue, gold, and yellow. Uh, I found that that's a, a, a very interesting variety of colors that from other alleged um, abductions from other aliens, they don't have that many colors. Well, you think about here on Earth, how many colors we have, right? And uh, the uh, the differences are are there and apparent. And if we went to a planet of reptilians or or mantid beings, why wouldn't we expect to, or why would we be surprised if they all weren't green? Right? Why wouldn't right. we see the united colors of Benetton right on a mantid planet? Of course, absolutely. Now, uh, would colors mean different personality traits? Uh, that's that's always interesting uh, to me. Um, maybe not, but is there uh, a different? Um, how do I say this? Maybe you know. Uh, you know, red would be, or or pink would be, or yellow would be, green would be, um, blue. Um, right. you, you know, here on this planet, blue always signifies royalty, right? There's always that aspect to it, a monarchy of, of, of some kind. And red has its own, you know, maybe a military vibe to it. Green is, again, uh, emerald green, you know, royalty, politician, doctor, right? It yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Very, very, uh, very thought-provoking. It is. It 100% is. And the next thing I want to talk about, going back to uh, the reptilians, are the draconians. And these creatures or beings don't really have a good rep, at least here on Earth, Right. Of, of the many alleged reptilian alien species, the draconians are supposed to be the most corrupt, evil, and hostile type, and are also sometimes referred to as the alpha draconians. Mm -hmm. Alpha is the mm -hmm. key word there. Mm -hmm. So um, for some who study this particular type of alien in stories and accounts, say that they, that they are believed to have some, like, that, 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 sorry, that they come from the Alpha Draconia star system and are characterized by giant reptilian features when compared to humans. So allegedly, these aliens can be anywhere between 14 to 22 feet tall and weigh approximately 1,800 pounds or more. Can you imagine that? No, I, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to either. That's insane. Also, a um, quick thing. Thank you so much, Chris, for the super sticker. You're awesome. I want a super sticker. <laughs> I don't want to get one of those. The um, just the now we have the modern version of Draco draconians um, that are spoken about today. This goes back a long the, the history of draconian and draco and the views of that this goes back hundreds and hundreds of years maybe a thousand years or more this isn't uh this isn't something modern um and that that i find interesting and then we can flip this right over to the reptilian and draco influences on on cultures and politicians and 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 monarchies around the world that also you know go back thousands of years and the the influence there and we go into 
um, you know, the draconian rules that the government laid down on well, there's if you need to really think about that terminology and how far back it goes in, in pop culture. It goes back a long ways. Could there be this, you know, Queen Elizabeth is a reptilian, draconian, Draco. Could there be something to this? Um, I always go with where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not saying that I am all in. I'm saying I don't know. I don't know everything. And I, I look at all of the, the coats of arms and and the representation of reptilians and the look of Draco and dragons that 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 all around the world. This this isn't anything new, Christina. It's not. And even on that, even though there's a lot of conspiracy theories talking about Queen Elizabeth being a reptilian, from some alleged reports, it's believed that these draconians believe that they are the rightful owners of planet Earth and the overlords of humanity, who they consider us, the humans, to be lesser evolved beings as via their standards. So it makes you question yes. with, Queen, with Queen Elizabeth, right. I mean, what, what, what's, what's, why are these conspiracy theories believed so heavily by some? Because we wouldn't be surprised if it was true. That, <laughs> that's why. I mean, it, it, I mean, would would you be surprised? Would I be surprised if something like this was revealed? No, I I, I just wouldn't. I uh, and uh, in, I remember in this field, Jimmy. In this field, nothing surprising. No, absolutely, no, not nothing is surprising in this field. And uh, just a really quick promo for my Patreon supporter page, guys. I put a lot of behind the scene pics and videos, as well as Showtime extras, Q and A's with my guests, lots of cool stuff for those who would like to support my research and show. And as a college student, it can be kind of tough. So. If you want more content and new shows, please visit my Patreon page, which you can find in the Beacons page below. Yeah, right on. Click. <laughs> click it. Everybody click. There's some cool stuff. Now, um, and and staying on this, this is, I remember, uh, I don't know if anybody can put up a link in the chat, but there was, uh, it was probably 10 years ago or so, there was this video going around of I think it was Obama and he's speaking and the camera pans out and one of his secret service agents standing in the in the back of the room and and as he turns around he freaking shape shifts no. just for a second into I this guy that you've got on the screen and 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 then he goes back to normal and it happens it's just and I don't know I, I watched that over and over again, that video. I don't think the video is fake. I don't think it's CG at all. Um, I think if it wasn't authentic, right, if this guy didn't shapeshift into a reptilian, then uh, it was some kind of crazy digital artifact that happened. But it, it, it's a crazy video. So anybody that um, I think you could probably look up um, Obama shape-shifting reptilian secret service agent, and you'll see the video that I'm talking about. Now, let me, staying on shape-shifting, I had a dinner party at my home. I've okay. got uh, a, a, a variety of people of note at the dinner table. I'm not going to get into that, but they know who they are. And this guest of mine, famous stand-up comedian, famous. And he says, I'm at the head of the table. We're like just, you know, shooting, you know, shooting the bleep around with everybody and we're eating this great food and, and things. And, uh, and he goes, you know, my girlfriend shapeshifted when we were watching TV. No. And I was, no. It's like, Okay, you're a stand-up comedian. Um, are we supposed to? And he goes, no, this actually happened. And this is what he said. He's watching a movie with her. She's sitting next to him on the couch. And literally like eating popcorn. And he's eating popcorn. And he just kind of turns and he just looks at her. And at that moment, 
she shape shifted into a reptilian, looked at him, saw him looking at her, and she jumps and then goes back to normal. What? Now that that's what he said. And and I'm looking, and this is, you know. If I said his name, everybody would just die. And I'm like, and he was dead serious. And then he got all of our attention. Um, now I'm not going to continue on with this. It's a it's a much longer story. But this is somebody that's a guest in my home. He's a friend, and I respect him a lot. And for him to have the courage to just come out and share this with everybody at the table says a lot. Because why say it? You can save yourself the embarrassment, right? And and anything else that may result from that by not saying anything at all. But he shared the experience with us. I have to take him at his word. That's all you can do. With, yeah. with, any, with anything you hear, with absolutely anything you hear, with any kind of witness account, any, including these stories, all you can do is take it from the world, word and um, judge their character. See if they're the type to tell jokes or to lie about these things but that's a pretty intense story especially yeah. someone firsthand i mean we we hear these kinds of shape-shifting stories or conspiracies um for those like really famous people those that have a lot of power but someone casual like your friend who is a, a famous comedian with with a girlfriend right well, like with a girlfriend we don't know if she's famous um that's that's pretty insane i can't even wrap my mind of around something like that yeah it was uh it was you know when you hear something like this and it, just like anything else the first thing that pops in your mind is this is yeah. bs <laughs> right that's a good story right okay we bought into it it was pretty cool you were pretty convincing that's what goes into your mind first and then there's the second part because this person will definitely say man i can't believe i just shared this with you well, if you hear, are they still together, Jimmy? Uh, did, did, did it change them so much that they broke up? You know, I that part I don't know. Um, I did uh, run into him last year, and uh, we we had a brief conversation about this. And I asked him if this person with him at that moment was the person he was watching the movie with. That's all I said, right? <laughs> and he goes, "No." So, okay. So that, but I was like, man, is this her? Wow. Is she going to shape shift right now? But he, he, he let me know that, uh, that was not her, but yeah, that's a true story. Really happened. There were a few people that were with me at that table. One of them was, uh, I can say one person, Steve Murillo was there with his wife, Pat. He heard the story. He heard it. And uh, Steve wouldn't mind me saying his name, but yeah, he was he was there. So uh, yeah, the question is, um, and going back to the the imaging of this, and and how we would be affected by the, being in the presence of a mantis being, being in the presence of a reptilian, or just you know what? How about like a hybrid tall white, or you know something that you know uh, someone that doesn't look quite right you know and you just know what would we do with all of that and i keep going back to one thing christine and this is for everybody um here in the chat that's hanging out with us i honestly believe that these beings wouldn't want to freak us out what they they just wouldn't want to scare us they wouldn't want to terrify us um if you're going to have some kind of communication, some kind of understanding between the, you can't start there. You can't start on that footing. I think that they would mask themselves. Shape-shifting is a, is a good way to put it that everybody understands into something that we would not panic. Right. And that, that way we could have some dialogue and, and okay. Now do you want to see the real me? Right. <laughs> would you be ready? I mean, would you be ready for that? And 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 it really tests um, people's people's trust or their love. If if you're dating this kind of being, but like you said that you loved me, now you see my true form, and 
you're calling me a monster. And there are so many movies and TV shows that are based off of that as well. Mm -hmm. And then that yep. person just ends up dying because they lied about their love. <laughs> I dated somebody in the 80s that, oh, forget it. That's another story. Well, and if we go back, if we go back to another place, you know, let's let's say, let's go back a couple of thousand years. And if there is um, interaction um, going on, um, hang on. It's friggin' Lou. What do I do with this? Elizondo? Yeah. All right. All right. We got some stuff going on. Um, it kind of goes back to John's question earlier. I'm working on that, John. I'm looking for answers. Um, if we go back and and you haven't seen movies of an alien invasion, you haven't seen reptilian overlords and Draco overlords, and and uh, you haven't seen Galaxy Quest. For the visitors. Uh, it, it, right, right, right. You haven't seen any of that. And you have an encounter with a being like that, are you going to, no, you probably, you don't have any reference point. You don't have any barometer. You don't have any way to measure any kind of fear. And as long as they are being nice to you and, and think, what would you have to fear? Maybe you would represent or think gods, right? You would think, oh, this is what is living on the other side of the ocean where we can't see, you know, over the horizon. Maybe this is just what's going on over there. You probably wouldn't freak out. We only freak out today because of the typecasting and and right. the imagery that has been pushed upon us. But if we go back, I would I really believe that uh, that there was a lot of interaction going on because nobody was scared, nobody was freaking out, nobody was upset, nobody was dying. And maybe there was sharing of information that maybe there was some help. Maybe there were some medical things that happened, maybe even with food or whatever. Um, uh, you know, they tossed him. Oh, you're lighting fires with two wooden sticks. Here's a big lighter. You know, this will make things easier. May, you know, may, just maybe that is how it went down. And not only am I OK with that, but the imagery and the typecasting and and things that we are taught today, all of that is modern. I don't think that there is any evidence of that going down in the past. And there's no evidence of it today either. No, there isn't. And guys, we are almost done for this show. I just want to encourage you all to go from this show to Michael Mataluni's Singularity Lab channel where he will be interviewing Avi Loeb about the Galileo Project lowdown. Jimmy 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 church my man um who do you have on your show tonight and uh what time is it at uh t tonight uh i have on william henry and uh william is great and we are actually going to be discussing some of the stuff we're talking about right now which is you know william is one of the contributing producers and and creators uh behind ancient aliens he has uh, been with uh the program since season one first episode and he, he's just a tremendous wealth of knowledge. And the show is actually called The Ancient E.T. Connection. Um, William and I were shooting a movie, uh, a film here in Los Angeles uh, a couple of weeks ago. He was in town. And I had the most fascinating conversations with him. And I said, you know, I just want to continue that conversation that we were having on the show tonight. Let's just open it up and, and go uh, in any direction. The show is at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So if you just go to jimmychurchradio.com, everybody knows where to go. Um, and you can pick your, your broadcast source uh, right there on the website. Or you can listen to it on the website. And uh, there you go. That's my that's my night tonight. I, I was uh, talking, uh, speaking with Avi Loeb all day today. He's very busy and uh, very excited that Michael has him on the show. I think John Greenwald. I had a conversation with them yesterday, but the Galileo project is an exciting one. It's something that Avi has been putting together for a long time. He's got a circle of, of researchers and intellectuals that are involved in this and uh, he is pushing this. So there you go. Very excited. Uh, and Michael's going to do uh, amazing with Avi. Oh yeah. He's a, I mean, look, 
having Abby Loeb is, is always a pleasure. It's always amazing. Uh, thank you again, Jimmy, so much for joining me here today on Mysteries with a History. Thank you so much, Christina. Behave and be well. I'll see everybody tonight on Fade to Black. And I'll see you there, too. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you for joining me here today. Come back next week for part three. I did not expect it to be so many parts, but here we are. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Go check out Michael Mataluni's now, his um, video right now. Link is below. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.